in August of 2020, my girlfriend Cynthia and I went back to school. Have you ever had that dream where you're running and suddenly you look down and you're no longer on the ground? Well, among the mint and lavender fields of Michigan, there's a place that will teach you how to do this for real. Sounds like a fairy tale, right? Well, the fact is, it's actually possible to run into the sky using something called a paramotor. And in this film, you're going to join a class of dreamers who are learning how to do it. Cynthia, yeah. did you get to fly today? I did not get to fly. Aww. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get to fly. It was just not right. I won't lie, I cried a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, It'll uh, happen. I really want to get Cynthia in the sky. That kind of sucked today. We, we, we need to make that happen as soon as possible. That interview was recorded nine months ago. That same day, I'd flown a paramotor for the first time. Cynthia and I had spent months preparing. And shortly after my first flight, it was her turn. It did not go well. Being only five foot tall and a hundred pounds, she struggled with the size and weight of the machine. After a few failed launches, the wind condition shifted and it became unflyable. The following day, it began to snow and the snow didn't melt for five months. Then came the virus, closing our airfield where our flying gear was being stored. Following this, our instructor was no longer available to work with us. Suddenly we found ourselves alone and stuck on the ground. As all the flight schools in Canada began to reopen, they were struggling to catch up after the lockdown and so were unable to help us. As we were beginning to lose hope of flying again before yet another brutal Canadian winter, we received an invite from a school in the US. They had heard our plight and wanted to help. The land borders were closed, but we could still fly in. And so that's where this story really begins. At Fly My PPG in Michigan. The week begins with introductions, and we have quite the group. There's the instructors Mike Cotter, Bob Harris, and Justin Fox, Todd Scandrit from a charity called Resurgence PPG, Josh Rowland, a former student of the school, David Wolf of the YouTube channel Parameter Crazy, and Travis Burns of One Up Adventures. And then there's our fellow students, Ken, Matt, Tim, and Jeff. So all the neighborhood kids, you know, playing, and probably, I don't know, four to eight year old range. We do the superhero thing, and somebody's Spider-Man. I always had to be Superman, right? The flying thing. And, uh, and then I, uh, I remember just all, when I was young, having the flying dreams, which are, you know, Superman-ish. And just, they felt so real. I'd wake up and it's like, I just flew. I mean, that real. No, I had no, no ambition to um, be under or over the ground. Um, I was happy at being a ground dweller and never, um, no, no ambitions to fly. So what changed? Uh, I become old and I decided that if I don't do something as a sport that is comfortable for an older person to do, less um, aggressive, less, less uh, you know, in the muscles and stuff, that um, I would be, become old and I want to not be old. So I'm just going to start enjoying, you know, the scenery, the, you know, what God gave us to, to enjoy, which is this world. 
It all started pretty much with uh, kite surfing. I've done kite surfing for about two years now. Um, I've dabbled with uh, uh, skydiving quite a bit. Just kind of hitting the waves, living by, under a chute has been pretty much my whole, uh, you know, passion, hobby. Um, and then I had a buddy that went to this school as well, and uh, he recommended it to me. He said, you know, a great community, great family, great people. And uh, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> Uh, my first real memory of wanting to fly is was probably around 2014. My brother got his private pilot's license and he took me up uh, in his airplane and he let me uh, take control and steer it and fly it around and uh, actually kind of fell in love with it then and uh, I tried to get my private pilot's in 2015 and it didn't quite work out so I was like, oh man. What happened in 2015 which meant you couldn't fly uh General, general aviation. Uh, I cannot pass the third class medical, I think is what it's called, the medical required to fly an airplane from some uh, damage from an IED blast to my head. So A's are going to be up front. Your next set of lines are going to be your B lines. Then you have your C lines. And then in the back, you have your D lines. This is a four line riser system. Bring the lines up to me. Cinching my hand down. This is called a rosette. Where all the lines come together in the middle there and then I'm going to walk out and I'm gonna go lay out my glider. The rest of the morning was spent learning about the gliders. For in the afternoon, we'd be kiting. Now there's one thing you need to know about kiting for the first time. It requires lots of patience. The following day was spent in class, learning about many of the different aspects of flying a paramotor, from weather to wing design. However, it was tough to concentrate because we all knew what was coming the following morning, and it sounded epic.
was followed by a flight demonstration by the team. fingers you can give me a couple of squat thrusts and you can feel that seat board go underneath your butt. Yep. There it goes. Good. Now when you're grabbing that when we say show us your right hand, stow your brake, or actually when we say stow your brake, show us that right hand, get into your seat, this is where you grab it. Right back there and you're just pushing it down. Grab the strap you're not okay. You know, I was concerned mostly about safety, like most people, and covering the proper amount of material from A to Z. Um, and they they exceeded my expectations in that. So um, you, you instantly have a trust for them. Um, they are focused on a conservative approach to it and covering it all. And um, they're not going to throw you up there if you're not ready. They're, you can see them gauging you along the way, and they will when you're ready, you know, let you go to the next step. When you're ready, take a deep breath and start running to me. Run to me, keep running. Run, 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 run. Good, release. The instructors were awesome. They are polite, they're courteous, they're patient. I can't say enough about them. How was that, Tim? That was more than I did in about 30 years. <laughs> I feel like I went through PPG boot camp. I am whipped. Muscles I haven't used in years are so sore. And I, I'm happy for it. This is exactly what I wanted. Get myself back into some physical activity. So training was perfect, step by step. Um, they kept adding the layers as I was ready to do it. And they were patient until I was ready to the next step. somewhere that the morning of December 17th, 1903, when the Wright brothers flew for the first time, 
They barely spoke a word to each other the entire morning. Our first flight morning was no exception. There was a quiet reverence for what was about to take place. Cynthia was up first, and I knew that her previous attempt nine months ago would be playing on her mind. She needed a good launch to build her confidence again. Launching a paramotor breaks a sweat. They're heavy. Failing a launch is tiring to say the least. Failing two launches is utterly exhausting. By the time Cynthia was forced to take a break, she had failed three launches. It was hard to watch. I feel like the first flight with David, like I feel like crying. It's like, okay, I'm lifting the weight with my arms and I'm kicking the back of the machine as I'm trying to run forward. And I just feel that it's like... I just feel like it's too big for me always, you know, and maybe I need, maybe I need to give that up. Maybe I am stuck in my story of I'm too small or I'm a woman and weaker. Give that shit up. Justin is like, man, you really need, when you're up there, this is your first flight, make sure you, you look around and take it in because you're just going to be so busy, you're not going to catch it. So I did that, and it was awesome. It's like, wow, this is it. This is it. This is, I'm, you know, like, like we said, you know, it, you're the newest pilot in the world at that moment in time. What an awesome experience, right? It's like... You're number one at that moment. When you finally lift off, you feel that power, you just, it's better than any roller coaster. Much more profound than what I would have thought with me actually being in control of leaving the earth.
Over the following few days, all six students completed over 100 flights collectively, including a group cross-country flight. Then, it was time to go home. You form a strong bond with people you fly with, and goodbyes are never easy. Getting Cynthia in the sky was a long and difficult road. And I'm proud of her. She never gave up on a dream. And now she's a flyer. As for me, I can finally start filming my flying vlogs, which I've been promising to my YouTube subscribers for the past year.